We finally got more information on how the parachain auctions will work for both Polkadot and Kusama and you'll find that out in this video, stay tuned. Now credit to Dan Reeser who is an advisor at the Web3 Foundation and also at Akala Network for putting together an article which I could use to summarize all this information for you. Now to start it off with the absolute basics, think of a parachain as a sidechain connecting to the main chain which could be Polkadot or Kusama depending on the startup's choice. Now Polkadot is the stable ecosystem of interoperability between all the parachains and the native blockchains like Ethereum and Bitcoin, while Kusama is the wild cousin or the experimental ecosystem of interoperability doing the same as Polkadot. Now to get back to parachains, in order for a parachain to truly connect to Polkadot, it needs to win the bidding in a parachain auction. Just like a crowd sale without actually losing your crypto but locking it up for a period of time from six months to two years. Now, winning a slot is huge for a parachain as it offers everything that comes with the ecosystem, plug and play security, intercommunication with other chains, governance, forkless upgrades, scalability, low fees, etc. Now, on the day of the auction, we won't actually know for sure who's participating, but one thing is for sure, those networks connected to Rokoku testnet in five different batches are highly likely to all participate from the first auction. Now the auction works by using the candle auction method. Candle auctions were originally used in the 16th century for the sale of ships. In these auctions a candle was lit and when the flame went out the auction would suddenly terminate and the highest bid at the point won. Now teams will be bidding using two methods. First the bid amount and the slot duration. The slot duration can be only from 6 months to 2 years each slot representing a period of six months with a maximum of four slots. Now, long-term parachains like Akala will bid for two years and I do believe that Moonbeam will do the same as their decision to enforce a four slot bid mentioned by one of their admins in their official Telegram group. Now, once the team kicks it off, you will be able to start bidding using your DOT or KSM on Kusama. You can bid multiple times during the auction and are not limited, so your bids would add up. Now the bidding can be done using your Polkadot.js web wallet but perhaps we're gonna see parachain auction support for Polka wallet or other mobile wallets as well. Now let's find out when will the auction actually end. Now after the predefined time of the auction end, the Polkadot system will generate a random end time and will determine the block when it will end or the end time if you wish to think of it in human terms. Now the team who wins the auction will then quickly move to its mainnet launch of their parachain. For any team who does not win, they can choose to participate in one of the next auctions that are expected to happen every couple of weeks. Now, as it stands, there will only be 100 parachains connected to Polkadot and 100 to Kusama's relay chains. However, in the near future, they'll both get scaled to handle over 100. Now that we spoke about the parachain auctions, let's discuss about the reward. So once a parachain successfully bonds, if you had bid for it, your DOT will be locked for the period of time you bid for. And in return, you'll receive the parachain's tokens straight to your wallet. Now some parachains like Akala on Polkadot and its wild cousin Karura on Kusama will deliver you 30% of your eligible KAR or ACA tokens at the end of the auction, while 70% will be vested and unlocked in your wallet over a period of time. Now, what's the disadvantage of locking your DOT, you may ask? Well, the only disadvantage is that you won't be able to sell it all or get any staking rewards, which are currently around 12% for Polkadot and 21% for Kusama, depending on the validator that you stake with. Now, what will happen at the end of the parachain slots? The team might conduct another parachain auction or might decide that they want to move to a parathread instead, which is the pay-as-you-go model. Sophisticated parachain projects like Akala could build up their own on-chain wealth fund or treasury to become self-sustaining and self-fund future parachain slot auctions without the need to hold another parachain auction with a crowdfunding for DOT holders. Now, how often will these parachain auctions take place? Well, around every two weeks as per a recent article and as per Dan Reeser himself. And they'll continue till 100 parachains successfully bond. Now to answer some of the questions that the community have asked Dan. Someone asked if there are any plans to have DOT and KSM integrated into MetaMask. And he responded that it's not currently possible and that you have to use Polkadot.js for that. 
Now, will there be a maximum amount of DOT or KSM needed before a power chain can successfully bond? The answer is no, as the candle auction random timer is what ultimately determines the end of the auction. And if the power chain successfully bonds, it does, right? Will Kusama have a redenomination like Polkadot? Well, he answered no, because Kusama is highly ingrained in a large number of wallets and doing it would be difficult. Just Kusama will remain at 10 million total supply with an annual inflation of 10% for funding validators and nominators. Now, one interesting point that he's answered was in relation to those projects getting a free power chain slot without the need of a crowd loan because they serve an important purpose for both the Polkadot and Kusama networks, such as a bridge, which would remove work from the relay chain. Now, think of Interlay here, ChainX and Rain's competitor who have no token to offer, but they'll still be a parachain. Now, that's it from today's video. I'd like to thank you very much for watching and I hope it helped you learn more about parachains and the upcoming auctions. See you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.